Today's episode of Cultured Society's Up the Road is sponsored by Big Choby Barbecue and Southern Flavors. You tried the rest, now come and taste the best. On another bus ride, going back to prison. I've been thugging since a young and in and out the system. Yeah, my mama tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. Head up, ten down, that's just how I'm living. On another bus ride, going back to prison. I've been thugging since a young and in and out the system. Yeah, my mama tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. Head up, ten down, that's just how I'm living. All right, what's up, man? Tell the people who you are. My name is Lee Alvarado. I'm from New York. I moved out here in Chobe, uh, a.k.a. King Indio. So tell us what got you locked up. Cocaine. I got a trafficking charge in uh, 2006. I got arrested in 2005. Went to prison f four years, ten months. All right, where, where did you end up going to prison at? Uh, I left the county, went to uh, well, CFRC, that's Orlando Reception Center. I uh, became a permanent there. I was there for six months. Uh, after that, I went to uh, Hardy County. That's over there by Tampa and Lakeland. I was there for a year, two months, a year and three months. After that, I transferred, went back to CFRC. Um, from there, I went to uh, Dade County, which is uh, South Florida Reception Center. Then from there, I went to Okeechobee. Stayed at Okeechobee for two years. Um, well, a little bit more than two years. Uh, I left Okeechobee, went back to South Florida. Um, from there, I went to work release, Miami North. I went there because it was the, the quickest turnover rate to go to any other uh, um, work release. From there, I was there 10 months, and then I went back to prison for the remaining of my sentence at uh, well, a mock, not a mockery, um, yeah, mockery. Okay. So, what's some of the differences you notice from county jail and the prison system? What are some of the differences there? Well, there's a lot of differences. There's a lot of differences between the way they treat you. Uh, there's a lot of difference between the way they house you. There's a lot of difference between how you are every day with inmates. The food is different. Everything everything up the road is different. Up the road is uh, prison, what we call prison. Yeah, cause I've seen people say they're ready to get out of county to, in a rush you, to go to prison. Because you have more, a little bit more freedom. That's all. You know, in the county jail, you stuck, you know, in, in a pod 24-7, you know, unless you go to court or you got visitation or by any other means that you go up front, which I don't know too much about because I don't do too many of them things, but a lot of niggas like to snitch and they like to go up front, you know, but we don't do them things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in county, is there a whole lot of TOHing going on or is that just a prison thing? What, what do you mean TOH? Like the test of heart. Oh, uh, that's, I think that's no matter where you go. I think that's more the way you carry yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you seem like you a tough guy or try to come in there like you you running shit or the TV is yours or the phone is yours, of course, niggas gonna get tired of that shit, especially a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna try a real nigga like that. You might try some peon nigga or some soft ass nigga, but you know, when it come to me and my time, this is my time, nigga. Your time is your time, my time is my time. That's how we do it. <laughs> All right, so. You you got any affiliations? Yeah, I'm a, I'm born Latin king. Okay, so born king. So what what, what they consider me is a golden child. Okay, what what's that? Break that down a little bit more. I was born into the nation. My father was a king. All right, so who's your dad? My father's king school. Okay. Yeah. 
originally Spanish kings. Okay, okay. So we're talking about back in the day, we're talking about originators. I we're talking what? about before, you know what I'm saying? King Blood came to New York and changed, changed it up. You know, my dad was in prison when that happened, so. Okay, so um, when you hit this compound and you, with the Latin King situation, how did that work when you first came in? Did they greet you with open arms? Did you have to go through anything? How well, did that work? Um, you have to present yourself, you know what I'm saying? And basically, like anywhere else you go, you know? It's the way you carry yourself, man, you know? They set you up as a real nigga. If you're not a real nigga, you got you know, you got to stay away. But uh, um, me, you know what I'm saying? Um, I hung out with all my brothers. You know what I'm saying? No, no matter, no matter. You know what I'm saying? Before, before um, they knew I was a king, or and after I knew I was a king. But I was, I was always, you know. I'm, I might be a younger dude, but I'm old school, so I hung out with the older cats. You know what I'm saying? And mainly all the older cats, they all affi affiliated some, some way, somehow. You know what I'm saying? But I like to do my time a little different, you know? But uh, everywhere you go, no matter what prison you go to, no matter what county you go to, there's going to be somebody, something, somewhere, somehow. All right. So tell me the, the first time you knew shit was really real. <laughs> And you was no more in the summer camp. Shit is real. Well, as, soon, as soon as I went to prison, I don't know. Wait, I, I could say Hardy. Hardy was crazy. I could say well, Orlando was my first camp because I was a permanent there at uh, uh, the East Unit. Um, it was real, you know what I'm saying. But it wasn't. It was more open, I guess, because. People, there were people that were that would come and leave every day, so the tension wasn't as tough. You know what I'm saying? More people worried about where they're going. You know what I'm saying? Where they're gonna be situated at? So their minds is kind of elsewhere instead of you know being permanent at one camp and knowing that you gotta be there for a while. Then that's when the stress builds in. But uh, um, Hardy was all right. Hardy, there was a lot of you know, a lot of drugs, a lot of. Uh, uh, a lot of punks, gambling, shit like that. But Okeechobee, when I went to Okeechobee, boy, I knew I was there. I, I knew it was the shit. The first three days I was there, I seen the nigga get killed. The, it was just wild. That's what, when you knew, when you, I don't know, like, to me, I know, when you go to a wild camp, that's where you can do your best time at, because everybody worried about other shit. You know what I'm saying? Okeechobee, man, they had drugs, they had fucking... They had phones, they had fuck books, they had everything at Okeechobee. It was, at that time, it was very, very wild. So the, fir the first, I want to say the first three days, I seen like seven niggas get stabbed. But I went to the yard just on the third day. And I don't know what the argument was about. I don't know what started. I will, first of all, let, let, let me take you back. Okeechobee is two yards. You have a yard on this side and you have a yard on this side. So everybody on this side is 24 years and under. And everybody on this side is 25 years to life. You know what I'm saying? So they have a division. You know what I'm saying? There's the whole compound action, but the gate is just divided. You know, they keep people on one side and people on the other. So I'm walking into the yard. And as soon as you walk into the yard, you know, they have a, a place here where you can get, you know, uh, uh, sports, basketballs, you know, chess boards, you want to play guitar, whatever, baseball, whatever you want to do. So on the other side of that, you know, the fence, so I'm looking because I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go play basketball. It, it didn't happen that way. But uh, um, dudes was having an argument. Next thing you know, they start fighting. And I'm thinking niggas getting off on him, like punching him. He wasn't punching him, he was stabbing him. And the next thing you know, he was folded over. And while he was folded over, he just kept stabbing him and stabbing him. I think he stabbed that dude like 27 times, bro. His shirt was was white. And it was as red as your shirt when he was done. I ain't never seen both of them dudes again ever in my life. Mm -hmm. 
And that was the third day that I was at Okeechobee. What, what went through your mind when you seen this? I said, oh shit. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> it's going down. So when you got to Okeechobee, it was the first time you started seeing real action? Well, it was on a more of an occurrence. It was, it was more of a, every, every day or every week, it was something crazy. Besides from the other camps that I went to. So what was the dominant gang in the Okeechobee facility? Land Kings. Okay, okay. But don't get don't get it twisted, you know what I'm saying? Okeechobee was a very wild place, but everybody had respect. There was a lot of good dudes there. You know, I met a lot of good dudes, even from different nations, different affiliations, you know what I'm saying? And as long as you conduct yourself properly and you don't disrespect me and I don't disrespect you, we good. That's how it always was. And at least that's how I carried myself there. I always stand on my own two feet. You know what I'm saying? Just like a man. Okay, so what happens to um if we have a white guy coming in the in the pod and he's saying, I'm down with Latin Kings. But he's white. <coughs> how, how does that work? Well, you have affiliates, which is people that hang with us. You know what I'm saying? That uh, um, they're not to know, you know, our daily routine or our daily business. But, you know, they get to hang with us. They prove themselves some way, somehow that, you know what I'm saying? That that they, they'll bang for us and, they, and they'll hang with us. You know what I'm saying? Keep it real with us. So, you know, some of them are two boys. Some of them, you know, some of them are not. Some of them are real niggas. That's, you know, neither here nor there. You know, that's no matter where you go. So, um... But you also have United Kings, which is the first time in Florida here that I ever heard that or seen it. And, I, and from my understanding, a lot of them are white. So, so walk with me what it would be like the first day on the prison, y'all. Your first day. Like, what would it be like? Well, let, let, let's talk about, since you want to say that, we're going to talk about my bunkie at CFRC the first time I go down. Um... Been talking to this dude, he was alright. Um, I really didn't, you know, vibe with him that much, you know, because like everybody else, I'm more stressed about what, where I'm going to go. Um, and one day he's on the yard and uh, he got his shirt off. He got a big ass crown on his back. And I'm like, and nobody's saying nothing. You know, they was playing, I think, baseball or something like that, uh, softball. So I let it rock, and I waited to me and him go in the cell together. And you know me, of course, I had to ask him, what what that crown be like, bro? And he was like, nah, you know, uh, 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 I'm, a, I'm a what? He said, I'm a United King. And I said, United King? I said, what the fuck is that? So I ain't never heard nothing like that. And he was like, yeah, that's, you know, because we can't be Latin Kings, you know, we got United Kings down here, and we're affiliated with y'all. <coughs> I don't remember the brother, but the next day, um, oh, in my, in my part, there was a, a, a Nieta dude, and he introduced me to a brother that he knew, and I asked him, and he told me about it. He basically broke it down to me and told me, yeah, that uh, they do have, you know, United Kings affiliates, whatever. You know, and and they, and they run with us. So that was the first time I ever I ever heard about this, and it baffled me. But me and him kind of, you know, I let him know, like, nigga, do you understand that it's a Latin king? You're not Latin, bro. <laughs> You're white. Huh. You're European, brother. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, why you think in the prison is so separated by race and shit? But then you see these people outside on the streets, and you see these niggas hanging out. But when it's locked up, we separated by race, like how you just said, like, well, yeah, we mixing mango, right? But it's not. It's more about control. And I think that carries carries more into, you know, into into back in the day in segregation. You know what I'm saying? When, when you separate people, you have better control. You know, when, all right, put it this way. When you fight one dude or... I wish I had a twig. If you had one twig, it's easy to break. But 
But if you have five twigs, it's harder to break. But if those five twigs come together and become one, you ain't never gonna break that. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what it's about. Prison is already to break you down and try to create you into, I guess, a better a better a, a better citizen to society. You know, and that's that's what prison is made for us to break you down, make you make you a better person, or try to make you a better person. But it's actually a college for all criminals. <laughs> so what was the guards like in there? Assholes. You know what I'm saying? Most of them, especially coming through CFRC or even your first time being down as, as it was mine, they want to prove themselves to everybody else that they can control and do whatever they want. So they want to make a name for themselves. So they're going to be, you know, an asshole with you and you know what I'm saying just make you do extra shit for nothing just just to show control to, to other inmates that they can do it um, but you got some officers that they're older and they've been there longer and they just want to do what they call hit the eight hit do their eight and hit the gate you know what I'm saying which is they want to just do their job and get the hell up out of there you know they yeah. understand that, you know, we live there. Even though they have a career there and they might be there longer than we have, but we live there 24-7. You know, they at least get to go home and be with their family. So. Do you get to see guards fucking up some of the inmates for just to fuck with them? Oh, when I left Hardy County to go to Okeechobee, before, before, right before we got on the bus, they locked down the whole prison. And the story was that two guards stomped the kid to death and they left their boot print on the, on the kid's back. That's the only reason why they knew that it was guards. But they stomped him to death. Yeah. And, and I don't know about other places, but I was always told different crazy stories about everybody getting the ass with. Matter of fact, let me tell you about when I first came into CFRC, my first time down, first time going to CFRC, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning, it's in October, they got about 30 dudes around in a circle, everybody in their underwears because they're about to strip everybody butt naked, and this Mexican dude don't know no English, and they're telling him in English and he don't understand and he's not doing what, they supposed, what he's supposed to be doing, what they're telling him. He already getting on the guard's bad side. So he was already on the shit list. That, that was the first time. Then we go, you know, when you first come in after after you go through the routine, which is, you know, they strip you, they cut your hair, they process you, you got to go see the dentist, you got to go to medical, you know what I'm saying, they take your blood, all that. So we sitting in benches and we're almost done. And the same Mexican dude, he, I guess they thought they told him, or he thought they told him that he was all right, that once he sees the dentist, that he could go to his pod. He, he still hadn't seen the nurse for the nurse to take his blood. So when he sees the dentist, he leaves. And everybody else is there waiting to go see the, uh, the nurse to get their blood taken. And they call his name, and they're looking for him, and he's not there. So they go back to his pod, and they bring him back with a small dude, probably like 5'3". I swear, a small Puerto Rican dude, 5'3", holding him by the back of his shirt, lifting him up the whole way there. They said they took him from the pod all the way out through the yard, all the way to where we was at. That's like a 5, 10 minute walk. Yo, all the way there. He they asked him if he seen her. She he said he, he said yeah, she said no. He got the dude mad. They smacked this shit out of him. They smacked him so hard. Alright, the benches is like not a normal bench you would see like in New York, like on the street, or like in a park, but it has no back, so it's just a long bench. But it's rows of long benches. 
And when he smacked him, this dude flipped over three, four benches, bro. I'm talking about blah, 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 blah. Rolled over like he was going down a hill. And, yo, it was the most funniest thing. But from that day forth, I knew when they told me, yo, when the officer talked to you, just look down and say, yes, sir. I already knew what time it was. Yeah, because I, I already knew. But dude hit me like that, but he had to kill me. It's, but, and there's nothing you could do about it because you in their home, bro. As soon as you hit him, you got Tim already to stomp you the fuck out. Because after they, after he smacked them and the dude hit the floor, there was like three, four more there already waiting. And all they did was grab him, get his blood, and take him right back to right back to where he was. Didn't take him to medical, nothing. Would you say you had more calm days inside the system, or was there more? Action. It was action packed, or was it? What, what was the what was the mood like for your your sentence, your bid? Well, I'm a cool collective ass type dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm cool with everybody. Just don't disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? I've always carried myself. I'm a man. I stand on my own two feet. So I believe respect is you know what I'm saying a big thing to me. So I never really had no problems. You know I've got into two fights. When I was down, but I never really had no problems. Everybody liked me. One thing, one one thing they said about me is that they liked that I always smiled, even though it was in the belly of the beast. You know what I'm saying? Even through all the wrong, all the bullshit was going through, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make my time the way that my time is. You know what I'm saying? This is me. This is not you. If you want to live all miserable, I'm, I'm not with that. You know what I'm saying? You got to make the best of whatever you got. And I was making the best of whatever I had. Is that booty bandit shit as big as the movies make it seem? Uh, that's if you down flow. I'm not a soft nigga either, so... If you soft and niggas know they can fuck with you like that, yeah. Matter of fact, here in the county, dude did that to a white boy. Let him move to his room. Fed the nigga, and then next thing you know, he said that he had that nigga yoked up and making that nigga suck him up. So, so you seen that in county? Did you see it in prison too? Um, I didn't see it in prison. It wasn't more in my face, like um, like you might go to the yard and see, you know, see them all clicked up, hanging out, or massaging each other. Or, you know what I'm saying? But them doing like fucking and sucking and it wasn't that wasn't happening in front of us. Most definitely it wasn't. We wasn't getting down like that. Yeah, because in um not all gangs, some gangs is okay with it, but the Kings is not okay with that homosexual stuff. No, no. We don't we don't play with that. We don't affiliate ourselves with that. You know what I'm saying? Even if we think that uh, uh um <laughs> anything about it, yeah you, you might just get X'd out. Just, just for the thought of it. We don't we not nah, we're not playing with homosexuality. What's that X'd out? Um, as in you will no longer be a king. <laughs> you might not longer be alive anymore. <laughs> What's some of the stuff that could get y'all X'd out? Can you speak on that or not? Uh yeah. Uh homosexuality, um, using drugs, lying, um, Trying to, you know, flip, which is going from one game to the next. I don't know, it, it depends on the shit you do, you know what I'm saying? And if you held guilty in court. So, y'all gotta go back to court? How no, you gonna no, be? we hold our own court. Oh, okay. No, we hold our own court. Yes. Um, at what point did you feel like you were probably at your absolute lowest? That maybe you may have felt rock bottom. What you mean, as in, in prison or uh, in life? Because I felt like I was as soon as they arrested me when they when they ran in my when the feds ran in my crib, I felt like I was in rock bottom. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I thought I was going down for the ages. <laughs> No, we see a lot of um, we see a lot of 
prison stories, things like prison break and things like that on TV. Um, but you, you got to experience the real thing. So um, tell me, what would be like the difference compared to on TV in real life? Some of the things kind of like that we don't see. The day-to-day -day things, the everyday things. But remember that TV's TV. That's a hoax. That's not real. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's a difference when you got to live it for real. You know what I'm saying? When you're in there 24 7 and, you know, every little thing is getting to you from the dude next door snoring or the dude down the hall tapping and the guard don't want to listen and, you know what I'm saying? And then you make yourself have bad experiences. That's when you, I guess, ready, ready, ready to kill anything. <laughs> but, uh, um, my, I don't know if I had, if I had a very, my, my worst day, I want to say. I guess my worst day was the day I got in there. That would be my worst day. Because after, after, I don't know, I got, I got, I got used to it, you know what I'm saying? I knew I was going to be there for a while, so it was either shit on the pot or get the fuck off, <laughs> you know? You get, ain't, ain't nothing much you can do when, when you got no choice. What was your daily re routine like? times but um, mainly I worked outside the gate and I worked DOT so that was Monday to Thursday I got up at 4 30 every single day um, got ready by five o'clock we out the door uh, six o'clock we are in at eight and getting on the bus and going to work we don't get back until well we get to the yard leave which is probably like 7, probably 8 o'clock, depending on how far we are. When I was in Hardy County, we went to Tampa, so it was an hour drive. But anywhere else is usually in the same county. Um, so I usually work early in the morning until about 5 o'clock, 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. Then you come home, you be, well, I want to say home, but you're back in prison uh, about 6, 7. Go to eat dinner, bathe, and get ready for bed, and do the whole shit over again until the weekend. So that was Monday through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All I did was work out and read books, unless I had visitation, and then I would go to visitation, which is usually Saturday or Sunday, you know. But besides that, I'm working out and reading a book. Okay, how much did you get paid? Get paid. Don't get paid. You didn't get paid for working? No, nigga, so you don't get paid. For free. This is not the feds. <laughs> the feds you get paid. Yes, this is for free. So you get this. That's why it's called modern day slavery. Yeah, this this you, they call it all right. Your early release is depends on what you do for them. Basically the work, you know, the way you act, you know, if you listen properly. Basically is view their bitch. <laughs> That's that's how I see it, and how 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 it is because you working to get ten days a month, and you can only get, I believe, was twenty four days a year. So that's ten days a month is, bro. That's that's almost what. three months and you don't even get a whole month you don't even get a whole month of game time for that and game time is your early release date like you work you know what I'm saying or you, you get game time depending 
because some people that close custody, they don't get to go outside the gate and they don't get to work. But even though some do get to work as a houseman and you know other stuff inside the prison, but um, the only job in in prison, what well, in in the state, I believe that you can get paid for is working commissary which is give set of food to the other inmates. That's the only way you can get paid. Yeah, but I worked for free. Yes. And all that all that free was a shit because I was supposed to do four years, three months, and I didn't do that. I did four years, ten months, but that's another story. <laughs> okay, so what got you locked up the second time? Well, the second time that I was in, I was in prison, I went. I mean, I was in work release. I went back to prison. Um, I had got into a fight with a, a Spanish kid named George. I forgot his last name. George something. Um, so I was with this girl that uh, she found me online, and she started writing me and. Uh, sending me packages, whatever, and uh, um, she was uh, a head nurse for, uh, I guess, a nursing home in Orlando, and she went back from Orlando to uh, Fort Myers. Uh, her name was Diana. Uh, make a long story short, all right, um, I was hooking up all my brothers with nurses from this place. They were all single, you know what I'm saying? They were just, you know, Lonely and needed somebody to, you know, basically pep house, you know. So, I guess he felt like he needed to call Diana and tell her that I was using her and that I was just hustling her to for her to get me stuff and da 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 whatever. He didn't even know that this bitch really didn't give two shits about me. You know what I'm saying? And she was the one that was. Give, giving me shit, I didn't ask for I told her not to give me shit, she was just sending me shit anyway, you know what I'm saying, I had Sunny and Kuso, you know, they were sending me shit anyway, so, but, um, so yeah, he called her, and, uh, I guess trying to make it a big thing, like I was hustling at her, he wanted to holler at her, and, uh, my brother Chaos, King Chaos, uh, he was on the phone with his girl, which is her home girl at the time, and um, he heard the conversation. So he comes back and tells me, but he's pissed off. He's so mad about the situation. I'm really not even mad. Uh, he was so mad about the situation that he was going to go fight him. And I was like, nigga, you, I said, that's not going to happen. You ain't fighting my battle with money, though. I said, I love you and everything, but I'm going to take care of this. So we go over there. I go into his room. And I go and talk to him and ask him, you know, what's going on and, you know, and um, the only reason why he was even around us was because his mother, his mother or his sister, I think, no, his mom used to be a sister of ours and she passed away and out of respect. You know what I'm saying? We let him hang out with the brothers that was in work release and there was only like, um, there was only a handful of us, I want to say probably like six or seven. Um, and so I went and had this conversation with him and these uh, Cubans have a thing where they talk, where they always trying to, you know, touch you and touch them and, and I got sick of it. So I hit him. So when I hit him, my brother hit him and I had to back my brother up. You know what I'm saying? Not to make it look like he was trying to jump on the kid, especially with some fucking pussy, because that's not how I get down. But, uh, um, yeah, I beat him up. And then he sent us back to prison, all three of us. So, from Miami North, I had to take that bus back, ride back to uh, uh, South Florida Reception Center. And boy, when we got there, I told the guard, can we do? I said, put me in the cell with him for five minutes, please. Just five minutes. And they was going to. And he said, yeah. And I guess the other guy heard. 
they took him off and put him on patrol <laughs> and they separated me and the kid. They kept me on one side, one side of a uh, 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 lockdown and him on the other side because it's like T dorms. You know what I'm saying? So I was on one side, he was on, he was losing in, in, in two totally different pods. Yeah, so that's why I went back to prison over some fucking nonsense. So I'm in prison. Did you ever get into a riot? Any riots? Well, first of all, I've I've seen many riots, and I have been in two riots. But one riot specifically was uh, Okeechobee, of course. Back to Okeechobee. Tell you Okeechobee was wild. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I guess one of my brothers was gambling and dude tried to buck him after he won and didn't want to pay him. So him and my brother got into a fight, head up inside the dorm. And I guess he felt like my brother got off too much on him. So he came to the yard and told all his homeboys, they were all kids from Miami, they were all from Miami. Even though a couple of our brothers was from Miami. But there were some Haitians, some other kids, uh, uh, and I guess they tried to step to my brother. And it was in the yard, and all the brothers was out there. And that day I was working, and by, I guess, the luck of grace, I came in early, go to the yard, I'm about to go work out, and I see everybody, you know, bunched up together, so you know something's about to go down. You can already see, you can feel the animosity, you know what I'm saying? You can see what's going on. So as soon as I get there, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Um, they already had sent my brother Tank to go get all the knives. <laughs> um, and it's about to go down as soon as I get there. As soon as I get there, one of the black kids stepped to, stepped to uh, uh, my first crown, which at the time, was uh, uh, Manito George from Tampa that owns the barbershop. Um, and I was standing right next to him. And as soon as the dude tried to come in my brother's face, I pushed him. I pushed him right over, right over a bench or something. And before he hit the ground, me and my brother was already on top of him. And then my other brother, which was Domi, the one that got into the fight in the park, he just snuffed the kid. Bam, and he snuffed the kid. That was it. All out war. Everything just broke out. My brother already had ran and got the knives. He started passing out the knife. Now, not to say that I'm He-Man or I'm a, you know what I'm saying, tough guy or anything, but of course I had my own knife and it was a sword. Um, I had a friend that uh, he worked in, in, in the warehouse, which in the warehouse was to keep everything. So I had him cut me off a piece of metal about about that long. And I had another friend that he works welding. So I had him follow down for me and make me a sword and bring it in. So when my brother had the knife in his pants and he went to pull it out, of course he pulls it out like this and cuts his whole fucking hand open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my brother Tank, he has a life sentence. Um, he'll never be coming home. I bless you. Uh, good brother. Um, so after that, everybody got shipped. Um, I was lucky not to get caught in the mix when they came around with everybody up. And I was already on my way to work release. Um, I think I had like two, three weeks left to go to work release when this happened. And, you know, for me, just coming to the yard, being outside, I guess that's what saved me and they didn't put me in with them. I had just hit the pound, I just hit the compound and all that happened. So by the luck of, you know, I guess as fast as everything went, they figured that I didn't have nothing to do with it. Even though I'm already red flag and they already know that I'm a Latin king, you know. So no matter what camp I go to, once they look in the computer, they're gonna, it's going to say Latin king. You know what I'm saying? That's what red flag is. You know, when you red flag for any gang, they automatically know, you know what I'm saying, tell you in the computer what gang you're. But yes, I'm red flagged.
So how has prison changed you, if any? Well, I always say prison can only do two things and four outcomes. And I could break you or make you. I either could break you into the person that you was or break you from being a man. You know what I'm saying? And make you a bitch or make you a man. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time, I went to uh, I went to prison. I was 25, and I thought I was I thought I was a man, but I wasn't a man. Um, and I left I left a boy and came back as a man. And it was more of not because of it was prison. It was hardcore. It was nothing about that. It was about me learning myself. I had more time to think. You know what I'm saying? When I was in the streets, I was running. I was I was always I was like Speedy Gonzalez. I was here, I was there, I was selling drugs, I was doing this, you know what I'm saying? So I was moving so fast I never had time to really sit and think, you know, to myself or think about what I was doing. So prison gave me that time to think and it gave me actually time to learn because a lot happened for me when uh, um, I went to prison. Um, I know a lot of y'all don't know, but uh, y'all know, um, I was a high school dropout, you know, uh, I was having my daughter and I dropped out of school and I hit the streets and I hit the streets hard um, and all I did was hustle my ass off. You know, I worked here and there, but I, I, I did more hustling. So when I went to prison, the first thing I was eager to do was to get my GED. And thank God that I did because not only I don't have a GED, I have a high school diploma. Um, and I got it here at Okeechobee Prison, um, 2008. So when I got when I got my uh, high school diploma, and I was like 200 points from getting a two year two year scholarship. So, let me ask you, what message do you have for the kids? Um, everything that's fast doesn't last. As fast as it comes, as fast as it goes. And if you want to live the fast life, eventually you're going to crash. You might not burn, but you're going to crash. And... God is going to put you in a place, you know, the Almighty is going to put you in a place where you're going to have time to think about it and you're going to have to dwell on it. You know what I'm saying? And either you're going to dwell the right way or you're not. Either it's going to drive you crazy and make you more worse or you're going to sit your ass down and relax and do what you're supposed to do. To me, you know, that's taking care of my kids. That's my focus now, my family. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about being on the streets no more, it's not about drugs, you know what I'm saying, it's what makes me happy, it's my kids, man. So, if you want to get into that life, you have to understand the consequences that come with it. You know what I'm saying, I can't, I can't be a hypocrite and tell you no when I said yes. You know what I'm saying, every man has to make their own decision, you know, and hopefully you make the right decision. But I'm here to tell you that it was good while it lasted, but at the long run, it hurt it more. So you can take it however you want to from there, but, you know, I made money, but it was gone very fast. And by the time I went to prison, I was broke. And it, it did not last. Okay, wrap things up. Do you have a final message to the Culture Society universe? Yeah, I want to give a shout out uh, to Culture Society, man. Gut mouth. I know y'all already know that that's my little cousin. You know what I'm saying? My cousin, the truth. You know what I'm saying? We, we go, we, y'all gonna see us real soon. We gonna be doing it. Like, you know, we're not just doing music, baby. You know, it's about everything. We real hustlers over here. You know what I'm saying? Give a shout out to my boy Blaze. You know, doing this this interview. 
You know what I'm saying? I want to thank y'all, man. Every day, all day. Thank you, too. All right. Peace out, Culture Society. KS, baby.